On Hulu Plus, Showtime was giving a free weekend preview, and I saw Need for Speed. And I'll tell you right here, it was much better than I had expected it to be. This uh, trounces Furious 7. It's about as good as the best of the Fast and Furious movies. So, uh, yeah, lots of spoilers ahead here as I just uh, ramble about the plot while I'm on an exercise bike. Too cold to go outside jogging. Thought you guys might want some kind of input on what I've been watching. So we've got uh, uh, this guy, I think his name's Paul something. The, the, uh, the guy with the big forehead from Breaking Bad, the younger one. He's uh, something of a, a uh, race car driver who has fallen through the cracks. His dad died, he's taken over his shop. Not a lot of business coming in. Old rival named Dino uh, is in town and he is, I don't know if he's a famed IndyCar uh, racer, but he has raced Indy. But he's in town anyways, they're having a bit of a, a race going there. And then, uh, you know, everything's looking okay for, uh, for a main guy though. But, uh, anyways, uh, Dino comes to him and says, Hey, so we have this car. I need someone to fix it up. So not only does this guy race, but uh, he also fi fixes and repairs cars out of a tiny shop that I saw a Saturn in the back. But now he's supposed to finish an incomplete Ford Mustang Shelby Cobra. And it's, it's done in like just the blink of an eye. They're like, right, we'll take the deal. And then next thing you know, the show's, there's a show going on presenting the finished car. I didn't care for that. I would have at least liked to see them work some kind of wrench, make it look like they built something. But so you get this concept car being unveiled with holograms. Anyways, this girl comes up to him and she's British and uh, at first she's putting on that she doesn't know much about the car and then she reveals that she does. And she says that uh, she buys cars for some rich guy and he wants like three million for the car if it can do like the claimed 236 mile per hour top speed. And he's like, okay, you know, if I if I get it up to that speed, whatever, uh, you guys gotta pay that much for it. And they're like, okay, fine. Next thing you know, he's taken out on the track. And this is not a track that you're going to be doing 230 anything in anything that looks like a production car. And yet they do because filmmaking. So after he pulls that deal, he's going to get a share of the price that this Mustang sold for. However, Dino says, hey, you want to race me, right? You want to beat me? How about instead of your share, uh, you can get the whole thing if you beat me. But I beat you, I get your share. And he's like, okay, fine. And he's like, why are we racing? He goes, all right, come over here. They, they drive up to this uh, uh, house, and in the garage, three Koenigsegg Ageras. Actually, one is an Agera, the two of the others are Agera R. And I think all the cars actually raced in this are replicas, but they look pretty good. Like, they did a, a good job with this. Uh, this has uh, Steven Spielberg on as a producer. So it had the money to keep pace and, and uh, look well produced. This is actually one of the better looking shot digital films I've come across. I think it's shot on a Canon C500. And if you didn't look it up or wait for the closing credits, you probably wouldn't even notice that. You probably would have thought it was film. So uh, they're having a race. And uh, this guy, third guy involved, his name's Pete. This is uh, little brother of... Don Johnson's daughter, who's barely in this movie, and she's dating Dino, but uh, as they're about to cross the finish line, Breaking Bad, that's what I'm going to call him because I don't remember the actor's name, and I don't remember his character's name, but he's about to finish. However, Dino spins out Pete and crashes his car, and he goes flying off a bridge, Breaking Bad goes back around, comes back for him big fire explosion, Pete dies. You had to know Pete was going to eat it, right? I mean, it, that was the role he was set to play. Dino finishes the race, you know, uh, breaking bad, he's in trouble, broke. 
he is going to prison. It said that he was illegally street racing, and that led to this guy's death. And he said, hey, there's a third Kona seg involved. He's the one who spun him out. And they're saying, no, these Kona segs, there's two of them reported stolen. And I'm like, man, this guy, this is quite a, an interesting plot twist here. Like, you're setting him up to either lose the race or go to prison. And it worked out quite conveniently for the bad guy. It's like uh, just something Sherlock Holmes should be looking into. So they couldn't find the third Kona Sig. It's put off into storage. After some time in jail, Breaking Bad gets out. He's released. He has to stay in the state. However, he is going to participate in this... Uh, uh, man, I can't remember the name of it. It's like De, De Limon or something like that. This uh, special race put on by Michael Keaton, who is some kind of eccentric billionaire who operates a YouTube channel. And the thing about this race is you have to be invited to it, and uh, you bring in like a fancy car, and if you win, you get all the cars. A uh, bit of a problem with that, if everybody crashes, then uh, what is in it for anybody? Is it just like billionaires send their best racer just for bragging rights? I, I kind of think maybe that should have been touched upon a little more. Well, he gets in contact with British gal. Uh, man, I can't remember her name. I think it might have been Lucy, but uh, the actress playing her is Imogen Poots. I had seen her in 28 Weeks Later and the Fright Night remake, and I thought she was alright, and she was actually really quite good in this. She had more depth to her character than any of the Fast and Furious gals put together, including Letty. But she starts out and she's like, okay, so that Mustang from earlier, yeah, you get to take it and go to the special race. You gotta get across country, you have two days to do that. So we're gonna have to get your team together and go and oh, I'm coming with you. And he doesn't want her there. But his boys, they, uh, they have a truck, a fuel truck that's on the road and they're gonna fuel them up so you don't have to stop. And uh, you know, there's a little bit of bonding there. There's some, some pretty good chases. One of the things this does a lot better than the Furious films of late is it makes the car stunts car stunts and not CGI crap. So the film looks a lot better for that reason as well. And you have better actors. So uh, one of his buddies is actually a helicopter pilot. He also flies planes for the military and he's getting aerial footage of uh, a race he's, or as he's eluding the cops. He says, hey, this is Need for Speed. There is cop involvement. And this does seem to do a good job of relating to the video games in that regard. So he shows this to Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton's like, okay, you're, you're in the race now, but you got to get here. Meanwhile, Dino says, hey, anybody who stops him from getting to the race, I'll give them my Siesto uh, Elemento Lamborghini. Very rare uh, concept car put in low production. I think there's, they said there's three, but there's actually ten. No big deal. Well, he gets to Los Angeles, signs up for the race, everything's looking pretty good, and then they crash the car. So it's not looking so good there. Then Don Johnson's daughter shows up and is like, yeah, I found out about my boyfriend, Dino. Uh, here's the, I know you need a car, here's the other Kona Seg. So she, she tells him where to get it. He goes to the storage locker, breaks out the Kona Seg, a little bit of lampshade hanging as they say, hey, why didn't you just destroy the evidence? Some people don't think they're going to get caught. I would think that if you're a sociopath, that is a possibility. So he whips out that new Kona Seg. Actually, it's a little scruffed up in the back, and they take it to the race. And the race is, uh, I think, inspired or nearly identical to one in the second Need for Speed game. So it's as though the people working on this played the games. What a novel concept. So they're headed off, and uh, at the starting line, there's a P1, and yeah, the cars are different than in the second game because the car didn't exist. P1, a Veyron. It's a base Veyron, but it's dressed up to kind of have the paint scheme of a Super Sport. Uh, there is the Sesto Elemento. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty good group. The Selena 7 is probably outclassed as it's like a generation behind. Anyways. Uh, pretty good action here, though the cops are involved because they're looking for Breaking Bad's character as he violated parole. And the cops have like all these traps set for them. And you're thinking, okay, surely somebody died in this, all these cars are getting knocked out of the race. But uh, I guess not, because it's like, well, the prison sentence wasn't that bad. I mean, 
Breaking Bad wins the race. He even turns around and helps Dino out of an explosion, showing that he's the bigger man, but he still finishes the race. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking, though there are no ramifications for it, the rich guy who loaned him the Mustang is probably upset. He ruined his Mustang. There's no cars really to collect for winning. I guess he, he might get that kind of seg. I think that car is used, it depends on the state, used in a legal street race and get confiscated by the police in these kind of matters. So, uh, we don't even know what Michael Keaton does. Like, it'd be kind of nice if he just said, yeah, you did a good job winning. Here's 12 million or something like that and make up for all these cars. Uh, but, you know, Breaking Bad, he eventually gets out of prison. I think he only serves a few months despite all the uh, police assault from, I mean, surely they took some damage from these vehicles. And there you go, the British girl's waiting for him. So this whole time he had his eye on Don Johnson's daughter, gets Imogen Poots instead. And I, I thought that she was quite an endearing character. And though I can't remember Breaking Bad's character's name, uh, he, he had a good charisma to him. Even his crew, I could tolerate them. There were some antics there. There were some stunts where I'm kind of surprised that people are climbing on vehicles at high speed, and it looks like the actual actor's doing it. I know you got that guy from uh, this Mr. Robot on USA I don't watch. But you know what? There, there's really not a whole lot to complain about in a video game movie to actually have some kind of logic behind it, plot twists, interesting developments. It's quite impressive. This is one of the best video game based films I've seen. Surely you've seen. I give Need for Speed 3 out of 4 stars.